Welcome back. For our fifth section in the series, let's take a closer look at the internals of Node.js. And I want to start this section by recollecting two topics we've already learned in the series. First, let's recollect what we know about the Node.js runtime. We know that the Node runtime is an environment which provides all the necessary components in order to use and run a JavaScript program outside a browser. At its core, it contains three major components. External dependencies like v8 and libuv, which are libraries that Node.js requires for its functioning. C++ features like file system access and networking. And finally, the JavaScript library, which provides functions and utilities to tap into the C++ features from your JavaScript code, which uses the V8 engine behind the scenes. Nothing too complicated, I hope. For our second topic, let's recollect what we've learned about asynchronous JavaScript. We have learned that JavaScript in its most basic form is asynchronous blocking single-threaded language. We split this into three parts, which I'm going to repeat for completeness. The first point is that JavaScript is synchronous. If we have two functions which log messages to the console, code executes top down with only one line executing at any given time. In our example on the right, we see A is logged before B. The second point is that JavaScript is blocking, which is because of its synchronous nature. No matter how long a previous process takes, the subsequent process won't kick off until the former is completed. So if function A has to execute an intensive chunk of code, JavaScript has to finish that before moving on to function B, even if that code takes 10 seconds or one minute. You might have seen this in the browser. When a web app runs in a browser and it executes an intensive chunk of code without returning control to the browser, the browser can appear to be frozen. This is called blocking. The browser is blocked from continuing to handle user input and perform other tasks until the web app returns control to the processor. The last point is that JavaScript is single-threaded. A thread is simply a process that your JavaScript program can use to run a task. And each thread can only do one task at a time. Unlike a few other languages which support multi-threading and can thus run multiple tasks in parallel, JavaScript has just the one thread called the main thread for executing any code. So in its most basic form, JavaScript is asynchronous blocking single-threaded language. But hang on, if that is the case, how do we explain the asynchronous behavior of methods like fs.readfile or http.createServer? Well, as it turns out, just JavaScript is not sufficient to explain that async behavior. We need new pieces outside of JavaScript to help us write asynchronous code. And in case of Node.js, that piece is the external dependency libuv. In this section, let's understand what libuv is and the role it plays in the asynchronous event-driven architecture of Node.js. I'll see you in the next video.